Hello, this is Noreen from Joy of Cards and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and welcome to my YouTube channel. Yay! For more of my Stampin' Up! card videos, please click that subscribe button and the little bell and you'll be notified when my videos release. So anyway, now let's go make a card. Hello everybody! Today's card we're going to be using Happy Hedgehogs and we're going to be going ahead and making this card but before we get to that, I do want to show you the different kind of ways you can use this set. First of all, when I get a new stamp set, I take a piece of paper and I stamp everything out just to see how everything kind of lays down because not all stamps are created equal. So I stamp everything out. This also kind of sparks some ideas on what I want to do with the stamp set. Now for this one, we have a punch. We don't have a die. So what I did is I also punched out some things here. Now on these examples, um, this is like just basic white with it stamped. Here is crumb cake with it stamped. This is white. And what I did is I took um, blending pens and I used crumb cake and a little magenta and I colored him in. And then this one is on crumb cake and I colored it with crumb cake Stampin' Rights. Here is white and I also uh, used the Stampin' Rights and the crumb cake and did this. I also put it his little ears in in pink. And then we get down to the coordinating punch. Now, um, the regular punch is here. Now, whenever you're stamping out originally, you do want to look at your punch and see which way you're supposed to put the paper in and where you uh, stamp it on your paper. So we've got the bigger punch, the base, and his little um, house here. And this is on crumb cake. And then I use the other color is soft suede. Now I went ahead and stamped these both. So this is what it looks like when it's stamped. And then I came over here and I stamped this one in crumb cake. And then this is from, of course, the January to June catalog. And he's on page 64. Oh, and don't forget, it's celebration till the end of February. So you can earn some uh, free stamps. But in the catalog here, they have his shell embossed and they embossed him with the greenery embossing folders here and you get two in a pack and they use the one with that looks like a bunch of leaves and so they embossed it and then they uh, punched it out with the punch and then here's another one where I use crumb cake and I also use and actually these both here are early espresso and this one I went ahead and embossed with that embossing folder and I stamped it. Well, I stamped it first and then I embossed it. So it's a little dark for that. Maybe it would have worked better on a lighter color, but that's just another way. And then also, if you looked in the catalog here, this guy, he isn't stamped at all. He's just punched. And in the catalog, they use this folder, which I just showed you. And then I thought I tried on a different one and that is painted texture, which is like one of, this is my favorite embossing folder. Um, but it looks better with the greenery one on it. And we're gonna make this one in the card. So this is how the punch works. Now, going back to the stamp, you know, I stamped them all out like this and I thought, well, gosh, I need to, I love mushrooms and I love the birds and the, the butterfly is small. So you don't really have to worry about this one too much, but there's like endless possibilities to, these two here. So I went ahead and I started playing with them. So it, you might want to do a close up of my examples. Like here I've got Cherry Cobbler, uh, The Light and the Dark with Crumb Cake. I used Just Jade on the grass. This is Cherry Cobbler and Mango Melody on the stem, the Just Jade for the grass. Here's Dark Cherry Cobbler and Dark Mango Melody. And I left all the little dots just white here. And then this one is Dark Cherry Cobbler. Mango I put underneath the mushroom top here. And the stem is in Dark and Light Crumb Cake. The dark for the top part and the light for the stem. And then this one is Polished Pink and Mango Melody. This one is Polished Pink. This is just light. This is light and dark. So this is light polished pink mango melody. This is also light and dark um, polished pink and crumb cake. And this is light and dark polished pink with the dark mango melody. 
And then down here, I've got Poppy Parade, which is really pretty too. I kind of, out of these four, I like this one the best. Out of the, these two top rows, I like this dark cherry cobbler, dark mango, and the light and dark crumb cake. I think this one looks best. But this is Poppy Parade Daffodil Delight, light and dark Poppy Parade, and eh, that one's okay. Uh, light Poppy Parade, light and dark Daffodil Delight. This is light and dark Poppy, Poppy Parade, life and dark Daffodil Delight. And then down here, we've got Magenta Madness with Daffodil Delight. And this one is crumb cake. So like this is a uh, light and dark. This is just light. This is dark. And the grass, this is Bermuda Band, the grass. I don't think I like that one as much. This is shaded spruce on the grass. This is dark granny apple green. And this one is just jade. So I kind of use different colors there. And then I moved on to purples. So this whole row is fresh Frieza. And you got the balmy blues here, and then you got flirty flamingos, but they're just a combination of how I use the light and darks. Like this one's just light, this one's light on just uh, the uh, top of the mushroom, and then light and dark on the balmy blue on the stem. And I use flirty flamingo on this one. Actually, I think out of all these colors, the flirty flamingo looks best with the fresh Frieza. And then I've got Highland Heather here, and um, it's just, this one's light, hot Highland Heather. This is a combination. This is with the dark Highland Heather inside, or actually it's a dark flirty flamingo inside. No, it's the dark Highland Heather. I'm that, yeah. So dark Highland Heather. And this one is the uh, light and dark daffodil with the Highland Heather. Out of all these, I think this one looks the best. Here's rich Razzleberry. And out of these, I kind of dig either this one or this one, but this is, um, light rich raspberry. This is a combination of light and dark. This is just uh, dark with the light underneath the top. And this one is light and dark with the dark being in the, um, in the little circles here. And then I use Daffodil Delight on all of these just so different combinations. And then here's Blackberry Bliss. And you know, I think out of this whole page, um, so this is light and dark. This is also light and dark, but I used the green from Just Jade from the stem uh, in the little dots here. This one I left blank. This one I used the Blackberry Bliss, the dark in the little circles. And this is just light Blackberry Bliss. And um, so just the, um, these are two on the stems. These are Just Jade and these are the Mint Macaroon. So just interesting. And then I got to play with it. <laughs> And I started mixing up. So these are kind of solids and these are mixing up. Where I use Bermuda Bay and Magenta Madness with the petal pink stem. This is um, Magenta Madness. Um, this is Bermuda Bay and petal pink. I just did different combinations. I just made this one darker. And then Calypso Coral. These are both Calypso Coral. This is just light. This is dark with the Mango Melon. This is um, Poppy Parade and um, Mango Melody with Crumb Cake. This one's Cherry Cobbler. Shaded Spruce is in the little circles and Daffodil Delight. This one is Light Shaded Spruce. I was very surprised with Shaded Spruce and Bermuda Bay. I didn't think I'd like these colors on the mushrooms, but I actually do. Um, Cherry Cobblers in the little circles and Mango Melody. This is the light and dark shaded spruce, dark on the top of the mushroom, light on the underneath part of the mushroom, and of course, Mango Melody. And then Night of Navy surprised me too. Um, this is light and dark Mango Melody with Daffodil. This is just mainly dark um, uh, Night of Navy with the light underneath. It's kind of hard to tell in the video probably. And with the Daffodil in the circles. This is Misty Moonlight. And this is just the light with the uh, light and dark daffodil. And this is also misty moonlight and daffodil. Just this one's more uh, using the dark. And then we hit down to some greens. I did granny apple green and fresh Frieza. I did the also another granny apple green, but I used the dark on the top here in fresh Frieza. And then these are balmy blue. This one is with daffodil. And this is just a light and dark balmy blue. So you can see the differences. I think I like this one 
and I like out up here I kind of like in this one and this one and then over here I, I really like these greens which was interesting I think the clips of coral came out really well and the blues the blues turned out really well and then the last thing I wanted to show you were the birds because birds is another element that you have to really think about and so I use cherry cobbler and daffodil delight and here is night of navy and balmy blue with daffodil delight here's misty moonlight daffodil with a little balmy blue and old olive I put old olive on all the little uh leaves here and then and the this little flower I kind of did you know the, the misty moonlight and the balmy blue and I kind of mixed them up uh poppy parade and flirty flamingo balmy blue and daffodil delight so basically the bird is balmy blue the light and the dark and the flower is daffodil this one is flirty flamingo and that's light and dark so just dark and light and then i just did the uh flower and daffodil this one was one of my favorites and i didn't think it would be and it's calypso coral and cinnamon cider and this one turned out really pretty Here's Coral Calypso and Ivory. Here is Pale Papaya and Daffodil. And yeah, that one's okay. Uh, Mango Melody and just the light in the dark. And I used the Granny Apple for the flower. And here's another one that I liked. It was the Cinnamon Cider and the Light Daffodil. So light um, Cinnamon Cider, light Daffodil. And I put Coral Calypso in the flower. So that's how I, you know, you can really use these in so many different ways than just kind of the normal way. Now, let's make a card. So here's the card we're making today. And what's really sad about this card is I was totally done and I was picking out the color of the base and I had just put up the lid on my memento and I spent bludged it <laughs> so there's some little gemstone here uh just to cover up my little splodges from my my ink so that's sad i cried anyway so uh, let's go ahead and do the inside first and the inside i've got some blushing bride five and a quarter by four and basic white four seven five by three and a half now all the dimensions all the supplies everything are in the description of my video so pull down the description everything's there if you're having a problem you're technically challenged go to my website joyofcards.com and it's all right there too so let's go ahead and stamp first because you always stamp before you snail anything down and if you notice i don't have a sentiment in my card and i don't i haven't been doing that lately because i don't know who they're going to and so many times i've had a really cool card and I was going to give it to someone and the sentiment just didn't work so I just leave mine blank for now so right now I'm just going to stamp the mushroom and the butterfly just in the corners here and make sure I close the evil memento up and look at my hand see I sh I spludged it right there so make sure you don't have any ink on your hands because it kind of oozes over onto the lid it's kind of a common thing or maybe it's just me but uh yeah just make sure you don't have any ink on your hands and now we'll just do some basic coloring um let's go ahead and take a dark fresh frieza and i'm just going to color in the butterfly wings with the dark fresh frieza and then i'm going to take a uh, magenta madness and do the outline of the wing and i'm using dark because there's a lot of black here and i did just refill my memento obviously and it might be a little mushy when you overfill um a stampin pad so just uh use your dark and then i've got some um light granny apple green for the grass here i'm going to use a um, light pale papaya for the stem and I might as well go ahead and use a dark pale papaya for the top of the stem here like that actually you know what let's use dark for all of it because the light is so light and then you know I couldn't tell which color I used I think it's polished pink and I'm just going to um yep it's polished pink I'm just gonna make circles around those circles so I don't nab them, just like what I did. And I'm gonna color this in real quick. 
Now I'm just going to nail these in and put it in the card. And then we're gonna start the front. In the front, we're gonna take basic white and we're gonna use four by five and a quarter. And usually when I do any kind of blending, I will use shimmer white, but I didn't this time just because I didn't. So let's go ahead and start the background. So the first thing we're gonna make is the sun here. And I just grabbed the smallest layering circle and cut it out. And you wanna keep your positive and your negative. So if, if you don't have layering circles, just any circle, you know, kind of the right size will do. But I use the smallest plain layering circle. And I've got my circle here. And then I'm wanting to take the teal Tombow. This is, <laughs> This is like the worst stuff you can use for just regular um, snailing, but when you're masking stuff, it's awesome. I'm gonna get out my silicone craft sheet here, and I'm gonna take the teal Tombow, and I'm going to do a temporary snail on it, and I'm going to put this in the upper, upper, upper left-hand corner here, just like that. Now I'm gonna grab my blending brush, and my Daffodil Delight and a piece of scratch paper. And I'm gonna tap off and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna color that sun. Now be really careful because I was, I was doing my, my card here and actually the original one is this. And I was doing my tapping off and I accidentally tapped onto my sky. So that was, that was like, what are you doing, Noreen? You are <laughs> stupid. So anyway, so here is my sun. And of course that tape comes right off. It's, if there's any tape residue, you can just push it off with your finger. It's no big deal. So that's how we're gonna do the sun. And then we're also going to grab the circle here and we're gonna snail it with that same teal Tombow tape and put it right over the sun like so. Now I wanna make this hill here. And what I did is I took my inspiring canopy die and just cut a piece of scratch paper. Um, and always use just plain copy paper for your masking. So I just used um, plain scratch paper. You can also just rip the paper if you don't have this die. But a lot of dies have a lot of little cool pieces to them. And this is one of my favorite to make a landscape. Now it also has a circle here that I could have done a sun, but it was just a little on the small sides, but I always keep that in mind too, just because of scale, like the scale for this, that would be fine. But for this that I'm doing, it just didn't work. So I went ahead and took scratch paper and cut out this mask. Now that we've got that piece cut, I'm gonna take that teal snail again and I'm going to figure where I want to put my land. And I think I'm going to put it uh, right about here. So now that the mask is down, because I've, I've taped off about that much of it, I am going to take some balmy blue Pacific Point and a little bit of that Daffodil Delight that we used on the sun. So let's take the balmy blue. So put it in here, tap off and circle in nice and light and even though that tapes on there you might want to hold your sun a little bit see how much it moves and just give it a little bit now i keep my stamp pants a little on the dry side because i do a lot of blending so uh it's a little on the dry side and yours will be you know however it is since the last time you did it and then i'm going to take a little bit of pacific point pacific point is really dark so be very, very careful. Do a lot of swirling before you go in and just give it just a little bit of color, just like that. And then I thought it was kind of nice to put in a little bit of Daffodil Delight, just to give it, you know, cause it's a sunny day. And I'm just gonna put in a little bit of yellow here. Maybe a lot more around that sun. And just like that. Now that your sky is done, pull up that mask and we're gonna use part of the mask to kind of mask off where we're gonna work on the grass here. So I've got old olive and soft succulent. So do your old olive and just kind of circle in and try to mask what you can. Kind of find the swerves of the dye like here. 
this matches up like that. And I'm gonna go in and then pull this over here. Try not to put too much on. I put a little too much on there. And then I'm gonna go in with the soft succulent just to give it another dimension of color. And get it close to that sky here. And soft succulent is kind of light, so I don't have to worry about it too much. And then you can go over, since it's soft succulent and it is light, if there is a little white in between, you can kind of go over a little bit. It's not going to really be seen. So that's how you do the grass. Now let's do the tree. So before we do the tree, we're going to take off the sun mask here and just remove whatever little residue of tape. And then back to the memento which wants to put black on my fingers to put on my card. <laughs> Only at the end though, just so you know, you can cry a little. So I'm just inking up my memento real good because you got one shot at it. And I'm not using a stamping pad. Oh, that's my dog. Uh, a stamping pad because I'm using a glass thing here. So I have no problem stamping on it. And then I'm going to stamp the tree right here. Just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and color the tree. Now it doesn't matter that I stamped over color because these will cover it up so I don't have to worry about it. So I'm taking my dark daffodil delight and I'm going to fill in the centers of the flowers and there are just a few of those and then I'm going to take my dark polished pink on the pointy end not the painty end and I'm going to color those flowers and just like so. So I'm going to color all the flowers and I'll be right back. Now I'm going to do the leaves in dark granny apple green. So I'm going to color all the leaves and I'll be right back. Now the last color is a dark crumb cake and I'm just going to do the trunk of the tree real quick. And that's how you do the tree. You can't even tell, you know, that we stamped over something because it doesn't really matter. And now let's go ahead and grab some grass. So I'm going to use a little grass and I'm going to use some old olive and soft succulent like we did in the background and just uh, stamp some grass everywhere. I'm going to start with the old olive and stamp it once and go stamp, stamp, stamp in threes. So you're getting some uh, stamp off and just do this over the whole card as much as you want. You don't have to put as much as I did. Um, you might want to concentrate around the tree where you got a little bit of the black and you can go ahead and um, not stamp the grass in black but I don't think anybody really really notices it so it's up to you. Now I'm going to dip into a little bit of soft succulent just to give it um, some different kind of green because you know grass isn't all one color just like that now let's make the little hedgehogs now I'm gonna use um, crumb cake and soft suede I'm gonna use the greenery embossing folder which is not a 3d embossing folder so you don't have to have an embossing folder plate and go ahead and take my um, soft suede and put it in the folder and run it through now that I've got this piece of Embossed, I'm going to just uh, cut the top of the hedgehog so just the top part up here and I'm going to put it in now when you put it on the hedgehog it kind of turns to the left a little bit so when I put this in straight I'm going to curve it to the left so when it matches up to the bottom piece it'll look a little more straight so I'm going to cut one out and then I'm going to cut a second one out so let me go ahead and cut this part off now for the second one we've got one here and there's two hedgehogs and they are facing each other what did i do well i just turned them around so when you cut out the second one now when you cut out that first one the part of the embossing paper that you want up is facing up when you do the other one you want it facing down because you're going to flip that guy the other direction so now this is upside down you're going to go to the um the part here and I'm going to go to the instead of to my left to to kind of straighten it out I'm going to go to my right a little bit 
to straighten it out and punch it out. So when these go on, they're correct. Now for the body of the hedgehog, you're gonna go ahead and take your um, crumb cake and we're gonna do the bottom part only. And we're gonna go one and then two. And it doesn't matter where you're flipping it really. So you got two pieces here and we're gonna have one going one way and turn it over so they face uh, each other and these go on. So let's go ahead and put him together, him and her. Now, actually, before we put him and her together, we need to cut the eye and the noses. So you need four of these circles. These little tiny circles are the eyes and the nose. So just take a piece of scrap black and turn it upside down when you punch. And then you could take your take your pick tool that has that little um, rubbery thing on the end and just put them, pick them up and put them in a little dish. So I'm gonna cut four of these out. So get your hedgehogs facing each other, get the um, embossed uh, top part in the right position and go ahead and I use snail. I like snail more than glue. I know other people don't, but I do. So it's what I use. And just go ahead and line these up and snail these on like so. Okay. And then I'm going to take, all right, if, if you are a demonstrator um, or a, like a big hobbyist, one of the best things you can get from Stampin' Up! are the um, black Stampin' Write pens. And you can just buy them by themselves. It's 100082 is a part number. These are great. So I've got this. I've got a dark magenta madness. I'm going to take my, uh, take your pick tool again with the little thing on the end and my fine tip glue, which I absolutely love. And when you open it up, just, uh, you know, make sure it's coming out first, just like that. And then I'm going to put the eyes on and the nose. So the eye goes right under where the ear is and try not to put too much. If you put too much, just take your finger and get it off. And then take your take your pick tool and grab one of the eyeballs and then get that down and then the nose goes at the top of the tip of the nose and i'm gonna get another uh, little black circle and put it there and i'm gonna do the other one here the same thing and then on one of my hedgehogs here i'm gonna put little eyelashes so i'm gonna draw little eyelashes there and then we need to put the mouths on. So I'm just going to draw in the mouths like that. And like that. And now I'm going to take a dark magenta madness. And on the one I gave eyelashes, I'm just going to put a little, oop, and I don't, I don't think I want to do dark. Here's light magenta madness and just draw on. Well, she's going out for the evening, so <laughs> her makeup's a little heavy. That's okay. And then let's go ahead and put them on the card and then we're going to make the butterfly. Let's do the butterfly first. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in memento again. Just stamp it out and we are going to color these in polished pink, I'm going to use the light one and then the light magenta madness. So I'm going to color that in and I'll be right back. Actually, I changed my color to dark fresh Frieza and dark magenta madness. And now the fun part, we're going to go ahead and fussy cut this. I'm going to fussy cut it and I'll be right back. Now that I fussy cut the butterfly, you're going to take your black Stampin' Right and very carefully go on the edge and fill in all the white that you see from the paper and it'll look like 100% better. So I'm going to uh, edge this and then we'll put the card together. Now let's put the card together. So I'm going to go ahead and just nail the back here. I'm making sure that there's no memento on my fingers so I don't give it a little splotch here. So now let's get our little hedgy hogs 
And by the way, I give away the demo card. If you are a first time subscriber, like, subscribe, put in a comment. I would like to win a demo card and I will email you back. And um, now if you can, go ahead and give me your email address. Um, if you can't, if you're not comfortable with that, then go ahead and email me at noreen at joyofcards.com and I will get you out one of the demo cards. So there's two here, one with the spludge and one without. So, and then um, the sentiment from the uh, set, I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna stamp it here. Try not to touch the card with my hand so I don't put any black on it. And that's the card. So uh, please like, subscribe, and see if you can win the demo card. And that will do it for me. Thanks, bye.